this morning, by the grace of God, uh, we want to consider little things which I know that God is committed to bless us with it. And uh, by the end of everything today, we will leave this place gloriously in the name of Jesus. I uh, want to say thank you, Pastor, for this uh, privilege. The Lord bless you more and more in the name of Jesus. Can somebody quickly open with me to the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 16. Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18. Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18. Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18. I want to read from my first on here. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. I want to read from uh, KJV here. Sorry. And I said unto thee, that thou art a Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Look at verse 19, that is where I'm going. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be lose in heaven. This morning, by the grace of God, we want to consider a topic that says Christian covenant keys or quotes to walk in miraculous. Christian covenant keys to walk in miraculous. God has ordained us to walk in miracles. Our joining with Christ is a miracle. Any time that you see a Christian that surrender his or her life to Jesus is already in covenant with God, and everything about such individual is a miracle. That is why the Lord Jesus was saying here, saying here that I will give you a key. So that's us, the key to every doors in life. There is a particular key that opens a particular door. So it may not work for others. Other people may not be able to enter that room. But when you possess the right key, you gain the access to it. So that's us. Other may struggle to enter that door. Other may want to enter the door and they struggle from A, from A to Z, but they are unable to enter the door because there is no original key. So the same thing with us. Our Christian journey is easy. God made it easy because he has provided for us some keys that will make us to get there without any struggle. Other may struggle. Other may struggle in the journeys of life. Our life is not the same way the other people in the world are living it. Other may do it with their strength. Other may do it with the everything in them, and the result may not be. Make, uh, be, be not be quantified with the, 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 the strength that they put there because there is no backing, there is no the right key in their hands. But I want us to know that with us, with the Jesus in our life, which is our the, the best advantage in us, we have the right key. And that the right key will give us the access to get to where we are going. So what am I saying here is this. God told Peter, he said, I will give you this key. That these keys of the kingdom, whatever you ask to come, we come. Whatever you ask to go, we go. That's all. There is a particular key that will give us access 
to say, this thing I want it, and it will surely go. This thing I don't want it, it will surely come. So that is the what God is committed to doing in our life. So if you look at where we read, the Bible says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. That's all. It is not only one. So we have the keys to every situation in life. If I need sand it, there is a key that I need to use. If I need money, there is a key that I need to use. If I need food, there is a key that I need to use. If I need job, there is a key that I need to apply. So that's all. If I apply the keys of the job to kill of the food, I may not be able to get food. If I apply the key of finances to the keys of marriage, that's all the marriage will not going to work. If I apply the key of a uh, sand earth to the key of provision, that's all I may not be able to enjoy it. That is why we see many people, many Christians nowadays, they pray from now to tomorrow and it seems as if God is not on the throne. God is committed to our answer. God is committed to our request. But it depends on the kind of where, I mean, the kind of keys we use. It depends on the kind of uh, uh, where we stand that will determine the results. The Lord God Almighty will help us in the name of Jesus. I believe the Holy Spirit will explain this to us in the name of Jesus. Let me use this illustration. All of us, we have our smart uh, phone. If, let me use Brother uh, Joshua as a good example. If I take Brother Joshua's phone and I want to ask, let the Brother Joshua say, Oh, Sam, take this phone and uh, on it, just go to my uh, account and withdraw, send. Uh, 1,000 naira and 1,000 naira, or may let's say 1,000 dollar to your bank account. I give you. If I don't know the key to this account, I will not be able to do it. If I started speaking in tongue from now to tomorrow, it's just a waste of time. If I started saying, God, you don't know that I'm your son. God, you don't know. If I cry from now to tomorrow, all the cry will just be in vain. God will say, son, go and meet the owner and get the key. Thank God because we are in the world of technology, you know, there are some places that you go, after you have paid, uh, somebody was saying that he paid for an hotel and uh, they, they gave him the code and he did not know. So everything, so he was just running around, running around, and he got to the stage after he had spent something close to, I think, two hours there. He was now and I said, you didn't come to the place. He said, I don't know how to enter until he, somebody gave him the key that this is the code to enter the room. So the same thing with us. There are some times that you see some Christian, they are just running from pillar to pole and it seems as if God is not committed to them. It's not that God is not committed to them, but because they are refused to use the right key to get the right results. Somebody says something uh, John, Maxwell, uh, John Maxwell, he said, if you know the right uh, problem, you will pray the right prayer. That is, if you know what to pray for, you will get the right answer. So, when we have the right keys in our hands, we get the right answer. There is no problem in this world that God is not committed to to give us the answer. The answer is there as that challenge come. At the moment that the problem arrives, the answer is standing beside it. But it will determine the kind of key that we use that will give us the answer. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So we have numerous of this key, but I will just give us few of them and uh, the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I want to say this before I move further. I put something here. 
I said, until you have the right key, you cannot open the right door. Until you have the right key, you cannot open the right door. And I said here, also, I said, nobody use big air to collect money in the bank. If you don't have the account there, you cannot get the money. I told somebody this one day, I said, nobody use, I'm a big man, said, I'm a big man, so I want to be the headmasters of my village. If you don't have the certificate and the qualifications, you are not entitled to build it. So the same thing, we cannot say because I have been in Christ. So I want to use the boldness to say I want to collect this thing. There are some things that you collect with the boldness in Christ, but there are some things that you need the word of God to take it through. There are some things that you need prayer to take through. There are some things that you need just instructions to go through. There are some things that you need the anointings of God to go through. There are some things that you need the help of God's servant to go through. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So until we get the right keys to the right problem, we will not be able to solve it. We just be taking God, say, God, are you not in heaven? God is in heaven. But it depends on us. He said, I have given you the keys. So that's us. There is a keys to open any doors in life. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Now, look at another thing that I said yet. I said, success in life is not by chance. And success in life is not what? It's not by chance. Until you do what you're supposed to do, God is not committed to do anything. That is, if I want something from God, if God says, son, stand here, and I started running, irrespective of what will happen, I will not be able to get it. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So, I want to give us some of these keys that are needed for us to get to where we are going in life. Number one key that I want to talk about here is the word of God. All other keys, they write on this key. All other keys, they write on this key. I want to digress a little. Uh, we were learned from some times ago, uh, maybe, at, or let me put it in this way, we used to hear something that the prayer is the master key. I think I said something like that during our meeting, that prayer is not the master key. When I supposed to do something, and God said, do it in this way, and I said, I want to pray, I will not get the answer. It's like the example I used with uh, Brother uh, Benje that Brother Benje said, take this amount of money from my account. And I decided not to ask for the code to send the money to my account. And I started praying. I'm just wasting my time. So, number one key that I want us to take very important is the word of God. When we take the word of God, we commit God to do anything that we want. Because the word of God is God himself. In the book of John, the Bible says, In the beginning was the word, and God is also that word. That's us. Anything we do according to the word of God, it will produce a desire result. The desired result cannot come to us without going through the word of the Lord. The Bible, told, I mean, the Bible said and uh, God told Joshua he said this book of the Lord, in the book of uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, sorry, in the book of uh, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 he said this book of law shall not depart from your mouth. That's us. Uh, and uh, in our God for that he said in it, you shall have 
you shall prosper. And then he said something that really amazed me. He said, you will have good sources. That's why there are sources and there are good ones. There are general sources and there are good ones. So as a child of God, as a Christian, other may have common sources, but when I take the word of God, I have good sources. So when I take the word of God, I have good good sources. So, there is no problem in this world that cannot bow to God's word. There are some times that you don't even need to pray to get some things done. I'm not condemning prayer. We are still going to take it. But if it is, if you prayed without the word of God, you are just praying and praying and praying like that. That is why I said, prayer is not the master key. Prayer is one of the keys of life. So, prayer is not the master key, but prayer is one of the key to get the attention of God, to, to, to know what God is doing, and to get the result that God wants for us. So, what I'm saying here is this. Number one key that we must take serious as a people of God is the word of God. We are every Everything in this world will fail, but the word of God will be there. This word was created by the word of God, and this word is going to be held by the word of God. Our getting to heaven is going to be based on the word of God, not by prayer. Our success in life is going to be guaranteed and going to be forever by the word of God, not by prayer. I'm not condemning prayer. Prayer is good because prayer is living. Prayer is living. Fine. But at the same time, our prayer is just a mere word without the word of God. So we cannot do, we cannot live only life without the word of God. We cannot get the attention of God without the word of God. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I said the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So let me quickly tell us some things about this word of God, what I put here. Uh, thank God because we have uh, a pastors that God has helped with God's word, that has the word of God with him. He will, he will just give us the, 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 the what do I call it, he will put the flesh with it. So I said here, I said in the word of God you get the mind of God. We cannot get the mind of God through prayer. But it is in the word of God that you get the mind of God. It is in the word of God you get to his plan and his plan come to fulfillment in your life. And I said here, yeah, it is in the word of God that you get the will of God. Because the word of God is God himself. So the will of God, the plan of God cannot come to fulfillment in our life without his word. So it is in the word of God that we know the ways of God. It is in the word of God that we know his agenda and his principle. So we need anything that we want to do in life without the standards of the word of God is just a, just, what will I call it, just an ordinary exercise. It will not go further. That is, I mean, it will not last Everything in this world will fade away, but the word of God will stand forever. Daddy told us some times ago, he said, there are many gifts of this, gift of prophecy, gift of this, that they will fade away one day, but those people that carry the word of God, they will be forever. And which is true. So we cannot do anything in life. We cannot get any door opened in life without the word of God. The psalmist said, he said, the word of the Lord I uh, hide in my heart so that I will not sin again. So that's us, if I'm struggling with sin, if I'm struggling with uh, evil, if I'm struggling with any problem, if I don't have the word of God but I'm praying, I will still be struggling with it. But the moment that the word of the Lord come, light come. Nobody pray out of light until you switch off the light. 
the, if you enter your room and you just see darkness and say, darkness, go, darkness, go, it will not go. If you say you don't know me, I'm an anointed servant of God, I'm doing it will just remain. The key that you need to do is to switch it on. So the key to problem, the, 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 I mean to come out of the, 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 the darkness of this world is the word of God. That is the only light that can give us guarantee and unlimited victory. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Until the word of God is in place, our prayer is just a noise. Until the word of God is in place, we are just praying and we are just doing exercise. That is why you see some people, they will say, I have spent 10 hours in prayer, but what is the result? Prayer until we know that you pray, it is until when you have the results. You are not praying because you said, I spent 10 hours in prayer, then I have prayed. No, until there is a result, then we can say, you have prayed. You remember what happened in the Bible when God's servant, uh, Elijah, when he, he molested the, 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 the prophet of Baal. He prayed a single, a simple prayer. They have been praying for hours from the daybreak to the night. But he got there, he produced results. He produced results based on the word of God. So we can never pray right until we have the word of God. We can never pray right until we have the word of God. I said here, yeah, I said until God's word is in place, we will not get our prayer will not produce any result. Word of God is the will that prayer right upon to arrive at the peaceful destination. I said, word of God, that is God's word, is the will, W-H-E-E-L, that the prayer right upon to arrive at the peaceful destination. So that's us. If I pray from now to tomorrow and I neglect the word of God, I pray out of the context of the word of God, I can never get divine results. That is why you see lawyers, when they go to court, they will say in session, so, 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 of this. Even if you are wrong, but there is a law that back it up, you get the case settled. So, for us to put the devil to where it belongs to in this end time, one of the best keys I want to recommend for us is that we should not joke the word of God. We should not joke with the word of God. Thank God for the ministry that God brought us to. Thank God for where God placed us. And I thank God, I want to uh, appreciate every one of us that are here that we are in the right place. Our pastor here is somebody that has the word. But until we to make use of that word, we will not get the desirable result that is getting. So, the word of God is very important for us to get to where we are going. Let me stop there and let me go to another key. Second key that I want to uh, bring out here because of our time is giving and seed sowing. I put it together, supposed to be two, but giving and seed sowing. It is another key to, get, to live a triumphant life in life. If a man pray from now to tomorrow and is looking to go at a, to run out of a poverty, if a man is troubling with poverty, and we call all the anointed servant of God are praying for that man from now to tomorrow. And they said, we want to cast out the spirit of poverty. You don't cast out the spirit of party, poverty without the giving. So, giving is a living. And it's a continuous life that we must live until we get to where we are going. So, um, you cannot cast, you cannot say, God bless you, and uh, the person that you are saying, God should bless and refuse to give. So, number one thing I want us to know is that giving is when you're supposed to give and you are praying, you are just wasting your time. 
That is why we see some people that are, they are prayer champions and they are poor like anything. We have some prayer deliverance minister, prayer champion, but they are poor like musk rask, rat. They are poor like anything, but you cannot come out of poverty without giving. One man of God said something and I heard him. He said, God told him, he said, prosperity is not answer to prayer, but it's answer to covenant. And what is that covenant? Covenant is that giving. So that's us. I cannot be prospered without doing what God wants me to do. That's why when you see some unbelievers, you see them getting, uh, they, they are in the ladders of prosperity and they are prospering there and night. And we say that those of us that we are praying, why is it that we are not getting the results that they are getting? Some of them, they are not doing any bad thing. They are doing it normally. Good thing, the way we are doing it, but they are doing something that we are not doing. That is why they are different between knowing God and knowing the principles of God. Some of us, we know God very well, but we neglect the principles of God. We know God more than anything, but we decided to ignore the principles of God. I want to read something in the book of Genesis chapter uh, 8, a, a, a popular place. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. It's a popular uh, scripture that all of us will know it, but I want to read it again. Verse 22. The Bible said, Why the earth remained? Seed time, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will not cease. So that's us. Before the result will come, there must be a time to sow seed. Before the result will come, there must be a time to plant. So that's us. I cannot expect maize if I refuse to plant maize. That's us. I cannot expect a harvest if I refuse to plant anything. So the word of the Lord, in the moment that we take the word of the Lord as the way it is, we get the results that is required. So, now let's see what this one is now saying. That as the earth remaining, until you plant, you cannot receive the harvest. So, here, yeah, what I'm now saying here is that giving is very, very important. The, I, said here, I said the only access out of poverty is giving. Giving was done willingly, not by comp compulsion. Oh, that's us. There are some facts that needs to be aware that we must know when it comes to giving. I must not give because I see Dr. Christie giving. I'm just doing it because I want people to know it. I must not give because they said I must give, then I must give. The Bible says the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So when I give, I must give willingly. I must give peacefully. I must give without stress. When it is not, when I'm not giving willingly, when it is under compulsion, I'm not, I'm just wasting my resources. So, and I said here, yeah, I said, you are not giving because of transaction or because of business. When I'm giving and my giving is based on transaction. Oh, if I give God on the Nera, I know he will give me 1,000 Nera. I know God is not like that. God is committed and is not somebody that can hold you anything. But if my giving is based on because I know if I give 100 Nera, I'm going to get 1,000 Nera, that's so I'm just, I'm just wasting my money. That's why you see some good givers, but they don't have results. And I said yet, I said, God does not need your giving for anything, but you need God for everything. If the motive of your giving is because God needs my money, you are just wasting your money. You don't, you, God does not need you for anything, but you need God for everything. 
I don't give because ah, I know that God needs me. That is why I there is something that always put me off when you see people say it. Ah, you, uh, you give to come and support God. You don't give to support God. You give to God because you love God. How many of you you have your trailer? I want to use this uh, example. You have your trailer, everybody, and uh, this is your trailer that is working for you. And you load the trailer, and uh, you just discover that the trailer is falling. And you now go there that I'm the owner of the company. I want to support it. God is too big for us to support. Let it be at like the back of our minds. So I want to give to support God. We are just wasting your time. God is too big for us to support when we give to God, we are, give, we are helping ourselves out of poverty. So, we are not giving. Don't give because another person gives. I think I've said that one. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So, what are we giving? What are the dimensions of giving? I want to say it our tithes. That is the number one thing that is very important to us that we must give. You are like concerned where the tithe is going. And I thank God we are in the right church where the tithe is going to the right place. So number one thing that, that one of our first dimensions of giving is our tithe. You remember what the Bible said in Malachi is they bring God the tithe into power. So when you give your tithe, you are not doing God any favor. You are doing yourself any favor. And our tithe alone cannot take us out of poverty. Our tithe is just the, 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 our commitment that, oh, this is what I have received. And this is out of what you are giving me. I'm giving this one back to you so that I can have another breakthrough. So that I can have another idea. So that I have another information. So that I can have another way out. So, number one dimensions of our giving should build our tithe. And uh, mommy used to say something. She said, she always said, bring correct tithe. What she was saying is that she wants us to give correct tithe. Anytime we pay tithe that is not correct, we are just giving offering. Or you are wasting your money. In the account of God, when a child of God gives incomplete tithe, God will not angry, but you are just giving your offering. Incomplete tithe is just an offering. A friend of mine said something. He said, he said, God, I don't want to pay tithe this week. I mean, this morning, uh, this month. I want you to borrow me your tithe. And God now spoke to him back. He said, do you want me to, do you want me to borrow somebody your miracle? And he said, since that day, he can never joke with his tithe. So, that's us. When I borrowed my tithe, I, anytime I, I say, oh, if I borrow my tithe, I want God to borrow my miracle to somebody. How many of you will be happy? Your, your husband give you something, and he has promised you, this is a card I want to give you. And he said, let me go and borrow it your friend for a year to use it. Will you take that card back again? Even if you take that card back, how will you feel? How will you see it? So, one of the keys... That is very important that we used to use is the keys of giving. So we must give peacefully, we must give joyfully. So our tithe is one, is one of the dimensions of giving that is very important to us. Then follow by our offering. Follow by our special seed. Then another fact that we must know about this is that. We are not giving because we are compelled to give. And uh, nobody can give what he doesn't have. So we have some good givers that they are, they, they are in the best uh, of their lack. What is happening is because they are not giving according to the will and the plan of God. They are not giving according to to the plan and programs of God. So, what we are saying here is this. When you give, you give according to your plan. I mean, the plan of God, the word of God. 
Then another thing about the giving is that we should give based on what we have in our level. You don't give, you don't borrow to give. Some people say, I want to borrow to give. I want to believe that it is against the scripture. When Jesus wanted to pay tax, does he go to the tax collector or the people that are rich? I know that there are some people that are very rich in his, in his ministry. That if he needed that thing from them, he will get it. But I want to believe borrowing to give is telling God that you are not sufficient to help me. It's like I want to assist you, God. So we don't borrow to give. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. And when we are giving, there are some things that we must consider. We must give in faith. Then we must give in love. We must give cheerfully, according to the word of God. We must give on God's understanding. And we must give by revelation. Then we must give by the leadings of the Holy Spirit. We are not to give by emotion, but we must give by compassion of the Holy Spirit. And that when we give, we don't give because we are in need. Oh, I'm in need of this. So I want to give so that if I give brother Paul 1,000 pounds, I know it is very good. He will give me 2,000 pounds back. No. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I said the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. And another thing I want us to know about this is that we should not give beggarly. But we should give boldly. It's like it's different from each other. What I'm now saying is this. If I want to give pastor one naira, let it be a good one naira from my heart. Not that because, oh, just let me dash him. Because he's, he wants it. He's begging for it. No. Let it give in our level in the normal way. In beg, in, in not, in, in not beggarly, but in boldness of heart. Oh, I give you with the heart of love. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I say the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So to walk out of poverty in life, there is a need for us to give. To give, not to pray. So we cannot use the kill of prayer to bribe God. When God says, Bring your tithe to me. And you say, I am not ready to give my tithe. It is my offering I want to give. Then I will use the prayer to substitute it. We are just wasting our time. One man of God said something. He said, anybody that eats tithe is eating some paper. And there is no amount of prayer and fasting that can digest it. You know what we call some paper? Mm -hmm. So if anybody eats that thing, this is a doctor. If anybody eat the doctor with that person, I think the person need operate. I mean, operation. Aha. Uh -huh. There is no digestment. There is no enzyme that can act on it. So the same thing when we are supposed to do what we are supposed to do, and we are praying, we are just wasting our time. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So number three key that I want to mention because of our time is, okay, in that one before I go in our giving, there is what we call prophet, prophetic seed. This one is very important. This one is very, very important. And I thank God they have told us in this house that they have taught us different things about that. So when we are giving also, another way to come out of poverty is by having a poverty seed in our hands. Prophet offering. You can see that one in the book of First Samuel chapter 9, verse 5 to 10. First King chapter 4. And uh, just like that. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 because of our time. So Another thing I want to say here is another key, number three keys that is very important is prayer. I decided not to start with that 
uh, prayer key because some of us we have seen prayer as the substitute to everything. If I want to become a medical doctor and I go to colleges of education, I think if I graduate after four years or five years and I say I'm a doctor, I will be the professional killer. Doctor, am I right? So some of us, we want to get results, but we use the wrong key. If I refuse to go to medicine school, doctor, and I refuse to pass all the required uh, exam, will I be called a doctor? No. But with the Christian now a day, we want to use a single key, which is the most common one, prayer. When I supposed to read and I refuse to read, and I say I want to pass the exam, thank God we have many first class in the house. If I don't know anybody, I know Dr. Christy here. Do you want to tell me that when you are in school, all what you do is to pray? There is anointing. There is fine. The day I had God that says success in life is not only by uh, it's not based only on God. He said, for success in life, is 50-50. I will do my own 50, then you will do your own 50. The day I had that thing, I said, no, this thing is prayer. So, when you are in school, doctor, you do what? You do your own 50 and God crown it. Until our 50 is ready, God's 100 will not be available. So if I start praying from now to tomorrow, I will not get desired results. But some of us with the Christian nowadays, we want to use that opportunity that if I call on God, God will answer. God says, call upon me, I will answer you. But God does not say, leave your own business and attend to. I was discussing with somebody under God, God gave me the opportunity just to help the person. And uh, when it was uh, maybe a week or a month after that, I was just asking, where are you? She said, I'm at home. Ah. You said your business, there is a problem. And God has helped you. Eight o'clock, nine o'clock, you said you are still at home. I said, don't take God for granted. That is why you see some Christians, they go to church when they're supposed to be in their workplace. And they say, God... Where is your face? God will say, I did have more. It's you that you are not serious. I'm in the right place. But it's you that you are not serious. That's why I look at the part of the world that we find ourselves. You discover that it's like things are working. It's not that they, they don't pray the way we prayed. But because they have do what they're supposed to do. But if we, the Christian, we take the advantage of what we have, the persons of Christ that we know, and the principle of Jesus, we put it together, we get the best result in life. So, prayer. Elijah, in the book of First King, chapter 18, verse 30 downward, when he, he, he performed the miracle, when he put the, the devil to where he belonged, when he sought the mouth of the evil ones, he has done his own assignments. Paul and Silas prayed in the prison in the book of Acts of Apostles. The Bible made us to understand that the place was shaking, but because that before that thing will happen, they have done their own assignments with God. So what I want to bring out here is this. Not all the prayers that God will listen to if we refuse to pray according to the word of God. Prayer is the key, but it's one of the keys. Prayer is the good key, but it is not the only key to access of life. I said here, yeah, I said prayer is not determined by the amount of words spoken, neither is proportional to the time spent, but the but is proportional and determined by the level of results that we receive. 
And what we bring that result to us is when we prayed according to the will of God. And what are the type of prayer, the kind of prayer that we pray? We pray the revelational prayer. We don't pray the environmental prayer. This is what will happen. Oh, Lord, do it. We pray the revelational prayer. What is the mind of God towards this thing? I think pastor was giving an example that of somebody that he said they want to pray for somebody. And when they got there, the Lord said, don't problem yourself. This is what happened. If that person pray from now to tomorrow, nothing will happen. Because God has showed the man of God, this is what happened. Do it in this way. I think I heard one man of God, he said, he heard that his friend, very close friend, was sick. And he, they told him that your friend is about to go now. Please, come and do something. We know that you carry the anointing that raised the dead and do this thing. And while he was going on the way, the Lord said, don't go. Will you turn back? And he reversed. And all the people inside the car say, you are wicked. He said, no, I just had God. God said, I have finished that case. Don't trouble yourself. So we need the revelation when we are praying. What is the mind of God towards this thing? Is God want me to do it in this way? Then it is the revelations of God that will give us the right results. But when the revelation is not there, we just will pray on the moon. A man that pray without the word of God is like a man facing water with baskets. We have Baba are going to say something. They said there are some. They are. They are. We have is uh, progressive zero. That person is just. We see the praying and sweating, but no results. We will not experience us in the name of Jesus. I say we will not express us in the name of Jesus. So what we are saying here is that we should pray by revelation. What is the mind of God towards this? Some of us, we believe so much in the time that we spend in prayer. Fine. But do you have the required results? Then another way to pray is to pray by faith. Prayer of faith. Do you believe God will do it before? Ah, God, if you can do this thing. If the moment that you say, if you can do this thing, you have canceled it. If you fast and pray from to tomorrow, the result will not come. Because we have said, if you can do this. If I come to Dr. Christie's house today, and uh, I said, I'm hungry. And I said, doctor, if, is it possible for you to give me food? She so will think, uh, you say, brother, you're so serious, bye. So we should pray it that say when you ask, the Bible says, when you start turn praying, know that God is there to answer, He is committed. Know that if you if you pray and uh, I think He will answer you, no. So when we are praying, the moment before you say, God, I want this thing, God know that you want it. And you said, I want it, and you get it. So it should be the prayer of faith, not the prayer of fear. If God can do it, ah, I will serve him. If you refuse to serve him, will he take God? <laughs> if God can do it, ah, I will do this. We are giving God, con we, we should not pray the prayer of conditional prayer. If God can do it, ah, God, ah, I will serve you more. The day you didn't serve him, we got changed from heaven. Those people that are giving their life to Jesus every day, are they reducing? So, we should just stop that uh, religious prayer. But we should pray the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. Elijah prayed it. And the Bible made us to understand that we are a like person like Elijah. We are just like him. We carry the same grace. I want to even to believe that the, the Holy Spirit is no more active during the time of Elisha like we are having it now. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I think I want to believe. So since we have the Holy Spirit, so we should pray the prayer of faith. Then we should pray boldly, not beggarly. God, 
head door. If your son come to you as a father and say, Daddy, hey, the door, but maybe you have maybe you have five naira. Will you give me? You will say, Are you a doll or a, you don't know what you are doing? But if your son come to you, I need five naira, daddy. There are some things that we are we have the access to, but because there is no boldness in us, we refuse to get it. So when we are praying, we should pray boldly, not beggarly. We should pray boldly, not beggarly. Then another thing that we should do when we are praying is that we should pray to with the lion heart, not with chicken heart. What does that mean? The Bible says we should come to the throne of mercy with what? With boldness. When we get to the throne of mercy, we should not say, ah, I'm not sure that God will do this thing. The day we that fear come to our heart, all the prayer that we are doing about that one, we didn't get the results. So those are one of the keys that will make us to live in miraculous. Prayer of faith, not beggarly. Then we should pray convincedly that the answer has come, not in a confused way. Oh, will God do this? No. I'm not sure whether if I ask God for this, will he do it? No. We should pray that God has done it and he has done it. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I say the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So until we pray according to the will and the word of God, there is no result. We should let that one be at like the back of our minds. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So we should pray the prayer of faith. We should pray the commitment prayer. Then we should pray according to the leadings of the Holy Spirit. The Bible made us to understand that they that labor, that spirit of God, they are the what? They are the children of God. So that shows if a son comes to his father and he needs something, oh, daddy, I need this thing, and uh, daddy will not just say, where are you coming from? He will give it to him. But if he called, you don't know me, and uh, maybe you don't know I'm one of your son. You will think twice before you release it. So there is a key for us that gives us the access to the Father when we pray according to his way. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I say the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So our prayer must base on the will of God. It must base on the will of God. And must be a prayer of commitment. Then it must be a prayer from our hearts, not from our brain. When we have the word of God in our hearts, then we will pray the mind of God. Not that, hey, this is what is happening. Let me pray according to that. No. When you have the word of God and the word of the Lord told you that you shall be the head, not the tail. And there is a situation post himself as if you will be the tail. And you now start and say, oh, I wonder, I don't know whether this thing will work or not. You only, you, what you need to react to is to react that, no, the word of God has told me I can never be the tail. One man of God said something, I think pastor shared it with us, I think I had it also from him, that when his wife was, uh, he saw blood, and uh, they said that uh, this won't happen, and he's uh, pregnant, uh, pre you have lost the pregnancy. He said, because of the word of God, he said, he said, bring my food. I can never, it can never happen to servant of God. So what that one is trying to tell us is that our heart that is connected with God, through the word of God, if we want to pray and anything happen, we should not pray it because that thing is happening. It must be settled through the word of God that we carry it. Other people may die of dangerous disease. But the word of the Lord made me to understand that in perfect peace he will keep me. So what am I troubling myself? Other people may die of corona or what did they call it? But it, it can never happen. 
He said, none of the diseases of Egypt will do what? Will come there. So, since that one has been set to, so I don't need to fear. What I need to do is to follow the principle of God. Other people may not live long, but it is definitely I'm going to live long because the Bible has said it. So, we should pray according to the will of God. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I said the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So, another key that I want to say here, before uh, we call it a day, here is the, the key of service. The key of service. Our service in God's fine yard give us the access to security, give us the access to joy, give us the access to peace, give us the access to everything, name it. When you see an official in a particular organization and uh, they said, go to so 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 country, that officer, since they have sent him to go and do that thing in that particular place, will he think of how he will get there? Will he think of how he will get the accommodation? Will he think of how he will get money? Will he think of how, how he is going to be fit? So the same thing, our service to God. Our number one service to God that God has called every one of us is to bring the sinner to Christ. So our service to God, when we are in the service of God, God is in the, at, at our service at every point in time. Say, as you serve your God, I will bless your water. I will bless your land. And so that's us. As I serve God, the blessing is automatically committed to flow into my life. If you are sent from your place of work, go to a particular country, only what you need is to go with your passport. Even if you don't have it, the company will could give it to you because they are the one that send you there. So God is committed to our life when we take our service in it very seriously. When we take our service in God very serious, God is committed to us. And that is one of the keys. Somebody says something and uh, they said, you have a particular problem. And uh, all the doctor, they diagnosed him. I think he was sent to the other, I think U.S. to so that they can do the treatment. And they said, we have done our best. You are going, please prepare to your load. You are going home. And the person said, he said, he go back to God. He didn't pray. He said, God, if I die now, all what I have been doing for you, who will continue doing it? I want to do more. And he said, that was the end of the problem. So our service to God determined what we receive from God. So our service to God is one of the keys that give us the access to God. So let it be at the back of our mind that we are not serving God because we receive money from him. We are not serving God because we receive something from him. But we are serving him because God is God and we love him. And our service should not be because pastor is there. Our past service should not be because my friend is there. Our service should not be because my this so, so, so is there. But our service to God should be that God is the one that I love most. If somebody cook for you, if you are not wicked, I want to believe. And the person is crying that I'm hungry. Even if it is the one that you are eating, will you not give it from him? You will do. So the same thing, when we, we populate the kingdom of God, we have committed God to do all other things that are needed to be done in our life. We have committed God to do all other things. Is it security? Is it peace? Is it joy? Is it long life? Is it good work? So the one service that we have rendered to God, give us open doors. Give us access to other things. So look at that man that I said. He said, 
God, if I die, if I die now, who will continue the assignment? And the, that was the end of the problem. I think if they flew somebody from Nigeria to U.S. and the doctor said, yeah, there is no solution. So what else is that, that person will do? Nothing. But he said, he didn't pray. He said, God, if I died now, who will take up the assignment? So our service preserved our life. Our service secured our destiny. Our service make our life to be longer. He gives us the longevity of life. Now, let's take for instance, some of us, we have a lot of cloth in our wardrobe. The good one, what will you do to it? You preserve it, you protect it, you high on it, you do a lot of things. The same thing with child of God. Any child of God that do anything, God preserve that person. God protect that person. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Uh, I want to give us one more key. Is the key that I call here uh, the key of location. Where do you stand in God? What is your position in God? Are you serving God because God is doing something to you? Somebody says something, they said, our location determine our location. Fine. That shows if I'm, if I'm located with Christ, that shows I get the right allocation from God. But I want to say it in this way, if a man is said I am in Christ and his mind is not in Christ, he will not get the desired results. The Bible made us to understand, it says, we are seated in heavenly places, far above. That shows when you are seated with Christ, and there is no problem, I and mean, one problem come across your way. You remember that you are seated with Christ. So there is no problem, whatever that cannot stop Christ, cannot stop you. But if we said, oh, we are in the world, and this thing, this is the way the world are doing it. Let me do it in that place. That's us. our location is not in Christ. It's in the environment that we find ourselves. Daddy told us, he said, we came from household of faith. So what is happening in heaven, it is what we determine our life, not what is happening in our location. So I want to commend every one of us. I want to uh, admonish us this morning that let's make use of these keys that God has given to us. We have been using it, but let us use it directly. You cannot use the key to open the to, to, to drive your car to open the ha your house. So we are we supposed to use the word of God? We should not use prayer. We are we supposed to use the word of God? We should not use prayer. Some of us we we are not getting the desired result because we use the wrong key. So as we go in this new year, for us to enjoy God and to walk in miraculous, there is a need for us to use the right key. Said the keys are be given to us. The keys are be given to us, but until you use it, you cannot get desired results. Somebody says something. He said, "Heftiness does not open the door until you have the asset key." then you can enter the room. So we cannot get the best that God gives to us until we use the right key. We cannot get the best that God has in store for us until we use the right key. I need money. If you need money and you are praying from now to tomorrow, I don't say God will not do the miracle. God can do it. Fine. But what are the seeds of the money that you are sent before? You need cloth. 
and you have given cloth before, what are those seeds? Automatically, God will remember it. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Before I ask the pastor to come, I want us to know that until we apply the right key, we cannot get the right results. Until we apply the right key, we cannot get the right results. Until we apply the right key, we cannot get the right results. So I want us to see it. Oh, I need something. What is the word of God saying pertaining to this? Somebody was saying something. He said, if you need a computer, you want to buy a computer. You want to buy a computer. And you go to Tesco shop. The kind of computer you buy there, if you see, if I, or maybe you see or, or by, by chance, the kind of computer you get there will be the toy one. That is computer. So we know where to get good computer. We take Amazon, Abby. Abby. Uh, so those PC words, those good, good place that we know. So until we use the right key, we cannot get the right results. If I need to know something about computer IT, I don't, if I call Sister Christy from now to tomorrow, it will give me little thing. Before I know what happens, she will take me to mercy. <laughs> yes. But what I need to do without any stress, let me call Benji. Most of uh, anything that has to do with IT that I bought and I'm um, still, I will just give him a call. I know if he didn't pick or and I buy, I will buy fake. If I don't buy fake, I will buy something wrong, another thing. So we need to know the right key to get the right door. If I need anything about nursing now, my sister is here. I don't need to go and meet uh, Benje. If I go to Benje, Benje will be giving me another thing. So let's go to the right shop to get the right results. If I need anything about finances, there are some word of God that has, has to do with it. So what I need to do is to sit down, not even to pray. Until I get the key, then I cannot ask God for the wisdom to use it. But some of us, we pray, we do the prayer things. They have told us the prayer is the master key. But I want to say here, yeah, I may be wrong because I'm coming. But prayer is not the master key. Is one of the key to work in miraculous. The prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. If that one happen. Not now. It works when people are not knowing right from left. If prayer is the master key, those good prayer warriors, why are they poor? If prayer is the master key, why is it that the unbelievers that are not praying, why are they making it in business? They go to the right place. Some of them will learn. Somebody says something, and I believe it. He said, prayer does not grow church. And I said, why? He said, prayer does not grow church. And I said, and I, I was just looking at that person, and I looked at the ministry of that person. I said, no, this one is true. He said, when he wanted to learn about growing church, he said he traveled to young to, uh, to, you, to young to of South, South Korea. And he mentioned some three men of God that they went together. He said, when he got there, he learned a principle, some principle. And then when they come back home, and uh, the church explains. That is why the Bible says, how are they going to hear if a preacher is not sent? So that's us until I go out and preach. Sinner will not come to, to me, to, to our church. So we should know if we are praying, God, increase our church. Good. But there is a need for us to use the key of go. Say, all power both in heaven has been given unto you. Go and make the disciple. So the disciple will not come when I pray. Disciple will come when I tell them, God love you. Come and see what God is doing. 
So until that disciple come, then I cannot use the prayer to sustain it. So that shows there is a big challenge for every one of us. We have prayed enough to grow this church. We have prayed enough. Let's use the kill of go. Let's use the kill of invitation. Let's use the kill of come and see what God is doing here. So I want to say that if you will want 100 people to come in the next 10 months, it's possible for God to do it. But if we started praying for the next 10 months, fasting and prayer, we are expecting 100 people. 100 people will not come. But if Christ, Sister Christie is coming on Sunday, come with two. Brother Paul is coming, come with two. I'm coming, I come with two. Pastor is coming, come with two. Let's add it together. When you know the right key, your prayer will be limited. You pray about other things. I don't say prayer is not good. But what is the purpose of prayer without results? You are not pray until results come out. Until you have evidence of your prayer. So the key to grow church is to go out. So there is a challenge that I'm throwing to every one of us is we have prayed enough. Let us continue. But let us use the key of come and see what God is. If you come to my church, just give my pastor 10 minutes to speak. That thing that we are passing through, God will settle it. So let's use the key of come and see what God is doing. When Jesus was calling the disciple, did you see where Jesus said, Oh Lord, let me have Peter. Oh Lord, let me have Paul. He said, come. And when one saw what God is in, then the Bible says, and Paul, uh, he, and uh, is it Bartimaeus that called uh, Philip? Is it Philip that? So let us do the word come. Let bring it to people. Prayer is good. Those of us that you are doing the work of prayer, let us continue. But at the same time, as we pray, let put actions to it. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. In our finances, we need God interventions. Let us put the right key there. Thank God all of us, we know what's going on in this. There is no out, there are no amount of money you have. If you don't have the driver's lances in this country, will you be able to drive? I think myself and brother J, uh, brother Ben, uh, ben, uh, ben J was say something last week. Said, Myself and a, a friend were just making a say to you, can you see yourself? You have money to buy car. But because you don't have driver's lances, your money is useless. So that shows there are some things. If, if he, the person that said he has money to buy car and he pray from now to tomorrow, he will not be able to drive on this country. So the same thing in the highway of life with the Christian, there are some things that we need to have. We don't need to pray about it. They will surely come. When I stand with God and I do what I'm supposed to do, the miracle will come. If I do what I'm supposed to do, the miracle will come. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I want us to bow our head this morning and just talk to God. Oh Lord, help me to use the right key so that I can get the right results. Some of us, we are prayer giants. Some of us, we are just begging God to pray. I mean, we are, we are just coming up as we can say prayer baby. But the result that some of us that we are babies are getting is more than the people that say they are prayer giants. I was telling somebody, I said, if it is prayer that make one to be rich, there are some people in Africa that they're supposed to reach, but they were poor because they don't do what they're supposed to do. Let's say, Father, Lord, help me to use the right key so that I can walk in miraculous, so that I can get to where I'm going. Oh, Lord, help me. Oh, Lord, help me. Oh, Lord, help me. Help me to use the right key so that I can get to where I'm going. Help me. Help me. 
help me, help me, help me, help me. Eli katos kabe talibandos ke felita hai kompratos ke pa. Help me, help me, help me. That I might apply the right keys in every situation. Help me, help me. Rudo shate ma petopa litos ke fetia maseto. Help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me, help me, help me. You might apply the right key in the right situation. Help me. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's look up for a minute. Um, first of all, I want to thank God for uh, Pastor Sam. This uh, message is one of the... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's one of the kind of messages that a child of God must remind himself every day because um, hallelujah because if we the the Christian journey involves making certain decisions every time you know the way the life of a man you are consistently making decisions should I go here today should I not go here today should I spend money on something? Should I not spend money on something? Should I do this? You may, if you think about your life, you make hundreds of decisions every day. Should I take two steps? Should I take one step? Should I go now? Go to the bathroom after? You know that kind of you because many times we do many of it unconsciously. You 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 like almost on 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 automation. That's why you don't think about it. But then. Those I- in all those situations, there are spiritual keys that you need to apply. Like he told us, there is giving, there is prayer, there uh, there is principle of right location. If you want to, for example, go to I don't know, you want to go to um, Spain and you are open to fly, but you in your good wisdom, you've ended up in the seaport. Are you going to make it to Spain? At least, are you going to make it on time? So, we, a child of God, like he said, must must know there is, like he said, prayer is wonderful, and we pray, but there is a wisdom that comes with even praying. There is a wisdom that precedes the decision to pray. You go and study Daniel. We know we talk of Daniel first. Daniel first. The Bible first said that Daniel went to study, and it was in his studying that he saw the writings of Jeremiah, and that was where he realized that this captivity we are in is supposed to be seventy years long. And then he went to God and said, "Excuse me, sir." At that point, it was already more than seventy years. I think they were on like year seventy-one or seventy-two. So he should have, if he had studied those things in year 68, maybe they would have packed their bags in year 70. But because he, he didn't, he, at the point he realized they were already going past the allocated time for their suffering. And because of that information now, the wisdom now said to him that, okay, you should take this information and go to God and say, excuse me, sir, you said 70. What is happening here? And it was on that basis he decided to go and pray. So even when you want to go on a prayer journey, the question is why? What is that prayer supposed to accomplish? What is it not supposed to accomplish? I like the fact that he emphasized to us that you cannot pray your way out of poverty. It is why many, many prayer warriors are poor. You cannot... Le- he read Genesis 8, verse 22. Let me, let's go back there and let's look at it. He said, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. In all that, those things he listed. You notice he said seed time, but he didn't say harvest time. There is always a specific time for sowing your seed. He mentioned prophetic seed. 
there is a time for prophetic seed. It's not that every you cannot take your Sunday offering and every time you say, uh, okay, this is prophetic. No, 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 no. That there are times that you see a servant of God near coming around you, and wisdom speaks to you and say, Hey, this man cannot go unless he cannot go without me sowing something into his life. That is different from your tithe. You cannot now take your tithe and go and use it as prophetic. Say, your tithe is God's own portion of what he has given you. He gave you 10. He said, give me one. So what your tithe really is, and I like that, I made, what your tithe really is, is insurance policy for the other 9 out of 10. Is insurance because when God was addressing tithe in America, he, he was he said I will rebuke the devourer. So it is that that nine will be spent the way that it, what Jesus Christ. What it means is that the remaining nine out of ten will be available for you to spend the way it should be spent, so that Satan won't come and collect five out of ten and leave you with the rest four out of ten you know you've given god one satan now takes five now you're left four out of ten so that one percent is insurance policy for the nine out of ten but it is not wisdom for the nine out of ten even if satan does not take your money you are capable of blowing it all by yourself so you understand so after you have do- used tight to ensure that Satan doesn't take money. You also need wisdom to make sure that you spend that money the way it should be spent. You need prayers. If the Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask. So you need to ask for wisdom to spend the rest of it correctly. It is also in that money. It is also there that you real that prophet of may be now come in and like, okay, the servant of God, I need to sow a seed into life of this person. Because, like he said. Sowing has to be by revelation. You can sow to your own destruction. A a, a servant of God was saying that they, there was somebody, he gave this story of someone that um, entered, a pregnant woman entered a bus and she, and she saw this old woman that was struggling. So she had compassion on the old woman. And the old woman said, I don't have money. Please give me some money. And so she checked her wallet, found some coins, gave to the old woman. By the time she got home, she lost the pregnancy. Because the old woman was not a normal old woman. The old woman was a witch. And by handing, anytime you give access to the devil, uh, anytime you give the devil access to anything that is yours, you are giving him permission over that thing so once once you, you are opening a door and then you know by her giving money to that person she has now now the person could, that which could take something and say the person that owns this thing the person that gave me this thing satan always has to connect him plug himself into you in one way or the other before he's able to do whatever he wants to do as long as satan cannot enter that's why the bible says he that breaks the edge the sa- did he say if the serpent breaks the edge? Did he say if the serpent climbs the edge? What did he say? The person himself will break the edge before the serpent can bite. We must learn to put the right key in the right door. And as he was saying, you know something that came to my spirit? Children of God need to know when to say the blood of Jesus. And to say when and to call the name of Jesus, they are they are the same person, but they are not for the same purpose. Don't be calling the blood of Jesus when you should be calling fire down from heaven. You, the name of it is it, the authority over the devil. The blood is 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 the blood of Jesus was not offered to the devil. The blood of Jesus was offered. To God a sacrifice for our sin. So the blood of Jesus redeems you. The name of the that's the Bible said, and highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the mention of the name of Jesus, what happens? Every knee must. So you don't be calling the name of Jesus 
when you don't call the blood of Jesus, when you are dealing with knees that must bow, if it is Satan that has to bow, the key is the name, not the blood. When you have sinned, you say, but I've come, blood of Jesus, wash me from my filthiness. Also, you must know when it when, when what you need is favor, when what you need is mercy, when what you need is that hmm, you should be in the right place. Have you ever wondered why Elijah just kept walking and walking and walking? The Lord has sent me to Bethel. <laughs> and Elijah will say, if you like, go to heaven. <laughs> we are going together. The reason you, you realize that the reason is because Elijah knew exactly where the chariot of fire was going to meet him. The chariot of fire was not going to carry him from anywhere. There was a place that that chariot of fire was supposed to meet him. He knew the bus stop for the chariot of fire he was about to enter. And when he got there, he knew. Because at that point, he now said, My friend, what exactly do you want me to do for you? That was because he knew it was where transport was coming. So before transport came, my friend, what do you want me to do for you? That is the principle of location. If he sat in his house, the chariot of fire would not come and carry him in his house. The Bible actually says he went to heaven by whirlwind. The chariots of fire came, but he actually went to heaven by whirlwind. The chariots of fire were seraphims and cherubims and all of that. The whirlwind was what? But the whirlwind was not going to come to his bedroom. He needed to journey to where he needed to be. That is the key of the right location. God will help us in Jesus' name. He, he, he said a lot. I, I would encourage us to go back. One of the things I do in this church is after a sermon, regardless of who has preached the sermon, even when it was me that preached it, when we get, as we are getting home, I start, I start that sermon again. Some of you have called me and I did not answer you because I was listening to the sermon. Because it, 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 there's, there, is, there is a grace that comes with repetition. You catch things you didn't catch the first time. You, you can listen to the same sermon 50 times. And at the 51st time, you realize, how come I didn't hear this before? So it's always a good thing to always go back and listen. You have the whole week to go back and listen. He was saying something about even when you want to pray, you must pray according to the will and the counsel of God. We, um, when Catherine Kuman was going to die, she was in the hospital. She was she was on the bed like that. And then somebody called her a robot and said, Catherine is in the hospital. Please come. And her a robot God gave him the healing anointing. If that man lays hands on you, it doesn't matter what happens. So he said, as they told him, that the, the anointing for healing came. So he started to, that is, because the way he, you know, those men had, can, for example, Kenneth Hagen, the Lord Jesus gave him an anointing that if he lays both hands on you and he's feeling, and the, the fire is jumping from hand to hand, it means there's a demon. If it's just stable in one hand, it means that it's just a sickness. So he can tell if it's that he should cast the demon out or if it's that he should just pray for your healing. Or a robot would feel fire. So he, once it came, he knew. He just needed to lay that fire on your So he said he was rushing. Him and his wife were rushing to the hospital like that. And when they got there, he was just running and wanted to lay hands and his wife just held his hand. You know, he just came in with zeal, just held his hand like, yep. And then she looked down at Catherine and Catherine was like, not today, bruh. I'm going home. The one I've done. If he had laid his hand, she would have been healed. And she was like, what was God saying? He was just coming with all the anointing and fire and all of that. And then, like, no, 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 no. Keep your hand to yourself because she was going home that day. So it, 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 it's beyond. The, because when God gives you something that he, he also gives you control over sometimes, it's a very dangerous place to be. Because if you, once he gives you control over it, now you are responsible for the administration of that. That's why God doesn't just give those things like that. Because look at Moses. Moses had that authority. That's why he could take he, he could take the stick 
and, and smite the rock when God said speak to the rock and water still came because the administration of that thing was now with Moses. But also the punishment of it was also with who? God will help us in Jesus' name.